on anxiety. Part one, hastiness and impatience. A soul worrying about doing well, straining and tensely drawn towards its purpose is held at bay, like water which cannot find its way through the narrow neck of an open gutter because of the violent pressure of overflowing abundance. Montaigne, from the Complete Essays, page 39, on a ready or hesitant delivery. I'm beginning to understand some of my anxiety's nuances beyond the constantly striking panic attacks, insomnia, nighttime alcohol abuse, and obsessive compulsive thoughts of death that used to consume me. The more blatantly obvious symptoms now curbed, courtesy of Effexor, and a wife who devotes herself to conceptualizing and practicing a philosophy of what I believe it means to thrive, like seeing a doctor for a checkup, for starters. Certain other symptoms, previously overshadowed, now capture my attention. For example, impatience and hastiness. Regarding career, I've grown especially impatient and thus acted over the past several months with somewhat reckless hastiness. I felt at times as though it would mean a matter of literal life or death. Yes, quite hyperbolic, I know, but tis what happened. If the right money-making opportunity, whatever that might be, as part of my earlier dream to be a professor, I had at that point abandoned, but not yet replaced. If this mystery opportunity did not present itself to me as instantaneously as links typically open after a click. In this aforementioned state, an utter tizzy, to put it another way, contrary to my usual preference for vetting a course of action before acting, I sent a trove of emails to anyone and everyone I imagined just might somehow take an interest in essays of mine I was marketing and advertising. Among those emails I sent was one to the editor of the New York Times op-ed section, James Bennett. I made a glaring typo in the email, forgetting an of where one belonged. And, though mentioning I saved an article from the New York Times, kept it thumbtacked on my vision board, I told him it was from 2011, though it was actually from 2010. And I didn't mention anything about it, other than that the piece of newspaper still remains in my possession. Ignoring my so what principle of verbal communication. I also emailed a literary role model of mine, the personal essayist and Columbia University professor, Dr. Philip Lopate. In his, in this email, despite telling Dr. Lopate, quote, I have exceptional admiration in your writing and ideas, close quote, I failed to reference a single fragment of his writing or any of his ideas, running straight past my substantiate thy claims principle, as if my soul had blown out of me earlier in some seemingly random exhale. But I caught myself in this mental slip, caught myself red-handed before taking the wrong exit to the place I was driving to, which feels very good. Like, dare I say, self-validation and vanilla ice cream.